There is one problem which we will have to address sometime soon because it's annoying me, is this. So in the last video, I took a bunch of JavaScript pages and I then used Next.js to convert those JavaScript pages into web pages. I saw a problem with this approach. The first thing is we could only have one code block per page, which kind of is limiting. And then the second thing is we couldn't have any other content other than the code block, which is also very limiting. Cause if you want to explain things, if you want to have different titles and different sections, I mean, we don't want to get too close to what MDN did because I think they satisfy a particular audience. Whereas for me, I want a kind of within one page, you can get a really good idea of what something does or just to refresh your memory on what things do. And on top of that, to add some things that you should be careful about or some best practice recommendations. None of this would be possible if I just use a JavaScript file. So one thing I was thinking of is like, well, what if we had like a separate markdown file? It just didn't, it just didn't feel clean. So I was thinking, hmm, what if I have all these files just as markdown files? And I know that there's processing libraries that can convert those markdown files into React components or map them into React components. What we could do is we could map that code block to our code editor. So then we could write regular markdown and then when it renders, it'll render a code block. The code block will actually be the editor and we'll have the run button. And then when we press the run button, it'll then display the output. So let's see how that will work. Before we get started, I'm going to be experimenting a little bit with the format of these videos because I'm a little bit tired of editing things so much. So I'm going to just go with the flow, not type things and just show you the, the diff between um, the previous version and the changes that I made. Hopefully this makes sense. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, so this is my packages.json file. So before we get into the code, I just wanted to, to highlight the things that I added. So I added uh, three libraries, React Markdown, Rehype Autolink Headings, and Rehype Slug. <laughs> the one that will be doing most of the work is uh, of course, React Markdown. So the first thing that I did, I took these JavaScript files and I converted them into Markdown files and just wrapped the JavaScript with these code tags. I also added the, the the string here as the headline. Maybe this is unnecessary, but you know what? I thought of adding it. The next major file that had a lot of work done to it was the dot 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 path dot tsx file. As you can see, I've already changed a ton of things. I added react, react markdown, rehype slug, uh, autolink headings, and uh, star as markdown components from uh, our components folder. I'll go to in, into this a little bit later. The, the other thing I changed is that it, our template will receive a prop called markdown. Uh, so in our get static paths, before we were looking at JavaScript files, and actually in this case, we were, we were accepting any files, but uh, that folder only contained JavaScript files. We changed those all to markdown files. And to make this a little safer, I added the .md extension so we would only be getting markdown files. Just in case if there's something else in there, we would only be getting markdown files. The next thing is inside the, the file paths map, of course, we don't need the extension in order to create the paths just as we did with JavaScript. So I just changed that to markdown. And then the, the other thing is instead of saying this is initial code, because we're not lo no longer exporting code, we're exporting markdown. Inside that markdown file, we'll, we'll, we'll have the code. So I changed this uh, variable name to markdown. And the last thing is, of course, uh, what I'm exporting is no longer return props initial code. I'm just renamed that to markdown. And the same thing in our JavaScript page template, we have this initial code renamed to markdown. And here's the major thing that has changed. <laughs> Before the file was 113 lines long, now it is at 61 lines long. And we'll go into exactly what I removed but you can see how simple my new file is. It's just React Markdown and it has uh, my two plugins and I have my components that maps the Markdown into components. And then we have the Markdown being given here. So what is React Markdown? It's a library made by this guy Worm and he made a whole bunch of libraries. He's the guy behind Unified JS. There's a huge number of libraries that, uh, that go along with Unified JS as well as a whole bunch of other projects that depend on Unified JS and their suite of libraries. Very cool. If you guys uh, are at all interested, be sure to check it out. It will change the way that you jo do JavaScript development. Uh, it adds a whole bunch of new features and it automates a whole bunch of stuff for you. So for this library, React Markdown, it does exactly what it says. It just takes Markdown and then converts it into React, just like it does here. 
you have a the tag react markdown and then you have the body is your markdown and then you just close it and that's it there are some options that you could take advantage of such as like different plugins that you can add like remark plugins and then of course the uh, you can specify children instead of uh, passing it into the body here there is some bit of difference between remark plugins and rehype plugins remark deals with the transformation from uh, markdown into the abstract syntax tree uh, that is uh, mdast <laughs> if you don't know what these words are don't worry about it uh, and then rehype converts that mdast into uh, react components for the components attribute we can specify what mapping we want to have between markdown keys and then the values are the react components so for example we have h1 as a markdown key and we can say okay that's a in this case they're saying well h1 is actually h2 so it'll map h1 to the plain text h2 you can also change for example em em is going to be changed into this i tag instead of using an em tag and in our case, you'll see that what we do is we take the code tag and then we convert that into our editor tag. So you see back in our file, we have the components attribute and we have the value as markdown components. So what is markdown components? So back in our folder structure, we have the markdown folder inside of our components folder and we have three files here. We're looking right now at the index.tsx file and all it does is it exports everything from the headings file and exports everything from the code file. So quickly looking at the headings file, we have this heading component with ID type and we are specifying this React component heading and it receives these things from React Markdown. It has children, which is the children has the ID, which is the ID. We'll get into what that is exactly a little bit later. And we have the level, so one to six. Just in case if for some reason, I don't know, I haven't looked at the code of React Markdown. So I said math min level six. So that means that even if the level is seven, it will always limit it to six because we're using typography here from Material UI. And Material UI's variant property or attribute requires that it be h1 through 6. So if we put h7 or something, it's going to be looking wonky. And the next thing is for align, if we have the heading level 1, we want to center it. And if not, we want to leave it alone, whatever it was before. And the next thing that I do is I just export h1 to h6 and make it equal to this heading. Now we're getting into the real meat and potatoes. So we have our... <laughs> file from before, but you might not recognize it. So this is our original dot 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 path dot TSX file. The only difference is I've removed a wrapping React fragment and I've also removed the title because that's now handled by our markdown conversion because it will use exactly this heading. It won't use the, the template that I had before. And of course, code will go to this heading. So I have one bit of logic that I think I should go over is this inline thing. So if I have only single ticks, it will mark this as inline true. And if I don't have single ticks, it will just say this is undefined. It won't say it's false. And if we have those single ticks, obviously we don't want to create an entire code editor just for that inline code. So we're just going to return the regular code block. And the next is all the same. That's all the same. This is all the same. The only thing that's different is that children comes back as an array of React components. Obviously, we don't want that. So I just cast this to string and everything works fine. The rest is all the same. So because we are exporting everything, and if you look in here, we are exporting h1, h2, h3, and even in our code file, we're exporting code. So that means when we are importing star as markdown components, we are actually importing them as an object with keys h1, h2, h3, etc. And that's exactly what React Markdown expects in their components attribute. So remember that rehype slug and rehype auto link headings. These are plugins for this rehype plugins part of React Markdown. What do they do? Well, this is what they do. So it's pretty simple. <laughs> it makes it so that these H1s have an ID that matches what this thing is. So for example, notes is going to have ID notes and then string length is going to have ID string length. This is just so that when people link to things, they can actually link to the particular section and not just the entire page. This is that Markdown file and it's converted into a web page that has code instead of having code blocks has code editors. There is one problem which we will have to address sometime soon because it's annoying me is this. Not that this. There we go. You see, it's hooking console log globally. So that means that no matter where I press this play button on the page, 
all of these are going to update with the same result. And that is not good. I, I think that's unacceptable. We have to change this. It must be improved. We must make it better. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you learned something in particular. I hope that you learned how easy it is to use Markdown to power your uh, Next.js projects. If you have any comments or questions, there's a comment section below where you can leave them. And that's it.